As the sun went down and the night sky shrouded the forest, we began to wonder whether we'd even make it through the night in these harsh conditions. No one said it, but it was on all our minds. Shelter, we can put the ground sheet down. Ready to put the ground sheet down. Starting the fire. It's gonna be really good. I've got resiny hands. Hope my hands don't catch a light and burn up in smoke. We took a risk and decided to go out and try and find some last minute food to keep us going through the night. We're out here trekking through the dark. The most important thing you can do when trekking through the dark is try to use your torch as little as possible. You need to let your night vision kick in so that you can adapt and be able to see properly. After about 30 minutes, it's almost like being in the sun. And we'll stumble across some birch bark here out in the woods whilst we're out at night time, keeping an eye out for grizzly bears. Don't want to get caught in a mix of those. But what this actually here does is it's actually really waterproof and you could actually put this on your shelter to um, keep out the rain. It works better than moss, better than most things really, but a great, great method that I like to use is layer of moss, layer of birch wood outside and then you've got the perfect waterproof shelter. What we're going to do is we're actually going to run down this hill Camp. We're back at the camp. I'm going to set up a fire in this trench. Put down a load of stones. Set the fire on so it doesn't spread. And what, what can actually happen is, even though the ground is nice and wet, the, the embers can actually burn down into the ground and set fire to the roots, which could start a forest fire. So we're just going to lay down some stones here. Let's set the fire on these stones. What we're going to want to do here just sharpen, well not sharpen, but scrape bits of wood off of the stick to act as some good kindling for the fire. So we're going to actually start this fire now. Get down here. Got all of this ready to put on top of it to burn nicely. We're going to want to snap that a little bit more. They're more compact. Yeah, it's not even going to be a cold, I don't think. It's going to be well good, isn't it? Out here in the Canadian wilderness, it's always cold, but um, we got lucky tonight, and it's actually <laughs> quite warm. My spirits are a bit, like, better now. Uh, We're actually going to want to light this fire now. Hopefully it's worked. Got some more twigs some underneath tissue. the tissue. Here we are, it's actually worked. This is what you want to do. Get oh, that no. fire rolling. We're going to be eating and then we're going to be snoring. There's nothing quite like that feeling of getting a nice fire going and boosting your morale tenfold. I don't want to put the buns into the fire yet. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to get these. Put them over there. We need some, oh yeah, okay, yeah. We need some bigger shit. This fire is gonna be roaring hard. This isn't to but burn, once we this get is some, to put the... Once we get some larger sticks in there, the burning should subside, but the heat will be incredible. Right, some bigger ones. A bunch of logs to put over this fire. Once they start burning, then we'll be in for a real treat and we'll be able to start cooking. The sight of the fire has given us all erections. During an erection, the arteries expand to decrease blood flow to the penis. 
The blood flows two tubes of spongy tissue to the corpus cavernosa. This causes them to swell, making the penis even larger and stiff. It angles out from the body, the veins narrow, which traps blood and maintains the erection. Out here in the wild, this can actually be fatal. I knew a man once that got an erection from his fire, and it actually blocked off all the blood from his head, causing him to pass out. He fell forward onto the fire, and perished in the roaring flame. By breathing on the fire, you can include more oxygen into it. Allowing it to burn hotter and brighter, catching your fuel on fire much quicker. You got a fire going now. I'm gonna whack the burgers. We couldn't find a squirrel today, so we bought up some backup food. This backup food will help us get our fuel. What this is gonna do is allow us to have more energy tomorrow. This is a well good fire. What you're going to want to do now is take your burgers and put them in this metal pot. That would have been okay. Picking the burgers. Already got some over there. Some here. Really good. You should actually never but you should actually never build your fire next to your teepee, as the teepee is essentially a massive fire and you could actually set it on fire, causing a huge forest fire. Fire. Bags, gonna load them up inside the shelter. We're all snug all see. inside the teepee. And what we're gonna do is we've actually made this door put here, stop the elements, a little bit of extra protection. And we're putting the shoes and bottles here just to stop that, just for that little bit of extra protection from the um, from the from the elements. And what that's going to do is it's going to block any wind that might have come in through here. It's not going to be blocked by the shoes. Um, so providing that little bit of extra protection, and um, should be good to go. But um, before we go to bed, there's always work to be done. So I'm actually going to pick up this small bit of fern. You know, I'm just going to try and find a hole. You know, pop it in there. There you go, it might not look like much, but I can promise you that that is going to provide a little bit of extra protection from the elements. I mean, it's not going to be much, but out in the wild... I mean, at the end of the day, that could be helps. the difference between life and death. It really could. You're going to want to keep all the bark on your trees as well, because... A little that bit little, of extra That protection. could have been the... Yeah. That could have been the draft. That could have been the last draft you ever would have felt, had it not been there. Anyway... It's time for us all to pack it in. Yeah. Call it a night in our shelter. And go to cozy. bed. Go to bed, get some rest, and get up early in the morning to tackle the following day. Actually, forgot about these um, potatoes here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put them right there. And what that's going to do is that's going to block um, any oncoming wind and just provide that little bit of extra protection. I also got, um, got this hand wash. And um, that's going to go probably wherever the biggest gap is that you can see. Pull a bit of branches in there, a little bit of extra protection, and provide it there. What that's going to do is that's going to provide that little bit of extra protection from the, um, from the outside. And as you can see, that um, water bottle is actually just slightly touching or one of those bracing um, core structural frames of the teepee. So that's going to provide a little bit of extra structural stability of the teepee. And that could be the matter between the teepee falling down on us on the night, or standing strong. And the last thing you want is to be crushed by a teepee. I knew a man once a radiant heart. that um, I had to keep, um, he kept his fire on outside. And what I actually did was um, he actually woke up and he was on fire. And um, yeah, he... Um, suffered very very horrible burns um, so don't leave your fires on at night unless you have um, unless you have a great good setup for it because honestly that can mean the difference between life and death um, as I said my friend um, knew a man woke up 
on fire and you don't want that. It's not very good. And as you can see, <laughs> under this jacket, we have this bin bag full of moss, full of bugs that we gathered earlier. Now this bag of bugs serves more than just being a pillow, but it's in fact going to keep you company during the night. A bag of bugs will stop me from being lonely. Being lonely is one of the biggest killers out here in the wild. More men die of loneliness each year than they do by attacks from any wild animal anywhere in the world. You cosy there, mate? Yeah. What we're going to do is we're actually going to settle down for the night. Right, one last tip before we pack it in the night. So you can often get a little bit too cold. So if it's a matter, it comes down to a matter of life or death. You might want to just shit yourself. Rub the shit all over yourself. And the heat from that might just keep you alive in a couple of minutes. Thank you.